Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, thanks all for coming. Uh, I hope on your way you managed to get some food or drinks from the back. If not, please help yourself. I think there's some left. Can everyone hear me? Can, right? Okay, can. Um, so welcome to the Tech Ladies Bootcamp Information Session. My name is Hui Min. Uh, I'm one of the organizers for the bootcamp this time around. So here's what we're going to do tonight. Okay, so ooh, 10 minutes late. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by telling you a little bit about what we do at Tech Ladies, um, uh, what we do, uh, what we are, and all that stuff. And then we're going to move on to talk a bit about the bootcamp application um, process. Uh, we're going to introduce the two NGOs that we are helping, as well as the coaches and the designers that we'll be helping this time around. We'll then move on to do a little bit of mingling. We'll save some time at the end for that, OK? Great, so first we'd like to thank all of our sponsors um, for helping us keep our Tech Ladies events affordable and even free uh, by providing those resources for us to create this experience for you. So without them and amazing support, we, we could not have done this. So please give them a round of applause to these groups. Great, so now we'll pass a bit of time to Soup, um, who is currently a mobile platform lead at SP. He wants to talk to you a little bit about his personal project called Mentor Note that he has recently launched. Hello, everyone. Um, so this is a personal project that I launched today. Um, this is not a full-time thing for me. Uh, so I full-time uh, work for SP Group. So rather than talking about mentor node, I want to tell about uh, why I built this and uh, how I built this. So uh, I have been in the tech industry for the last uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, so in this time, I have been active in events like this, uh, both as an uh, attendees um, and as an organizer. So one thing that I realized over this period of time, that people can do anything they want provided they have the proper guidance. So some of you are here today trying to find out how to get into tech industry. And some of you will get through the boot camp. And for others, it's not the end. This is just the beginning. So if you are able to find your passion and uh, really a bigger goal in life, then you can achieve whatever you want to do. So Mentor Note is all about that. It's a mentoring platform. Uh, two of the categories that I launched uh, today with uh, are women in tech and startups. Uh, so you can find mentors and connect with mentors in this platform. Um, it's free. Uh, I don't want to charge mentees uh, to use this platform. Uh, there's nothing much for mentors in it as well. A lot of other platforms uh, that I searched and found, uh, usually mentees need to pay a lot to find a mentor, so like a few thousand bucks. But I want this to be a community where mentors can help others because they want to help. Like some of the coaches here today, they are not going to get paid for helping you to learn coding. So they are going to help you because they want to help you get succeed in life. Um, again, as I mentioned, uh, this is a personal project. Um, I finished this in three months while having a day job. Um, so one thing that I did uh, is I worked on this every single day. I worked for about two hours every day. And I was just going through the tech ladies, uh, you know, the, the uh, standee. And it says that it's a part-time thing. And it is possible to do things part-time. And it is possible to achieve whatever you want to do uh, doing this part-time, provided you commit yourself to this thing every day. You need to spend time on this every single day. That's the key. Uh, don't want to go through this a lot. Uh, this, this is not a sales pitch. Just wanted to introduce uh, about this particular uh, project. If you haven't taken your T-shirt, you can take it later on. Um, thank you. I'll pass the mic back to the organizers. Thanks. Right. So, what is Tech Ladies? Right. So we here at Tech Ladies, uh, we believe that uh, the ability to code is a superpower. Okay. There are so many problems and issues today that can be solved with technology. Uh, when I'm equipped with the ability to code, uh, I can figure out, I can look at a problem, 
figure out how to solve it and have that ability to solve it and build the solution myself. And that's really cool. Now, where are the women? Right? It's strange that when you look around, uh, you don't see a lot of women around. Uh, so we, we think to ourselves at Tech Ladies, right? Like programming so amazing. Why isn't there more of us around? Like, is it because it's a gender difference? Is it a stigma whatsoever? Too many answers for that. So we think that it's a shame that women are put up by technology. And Tech Ladies is then born out of that desire to tilt that scale, right? So this is created by Elisha, Tech Ladies. Um, it is. Thanks. It's a community-led initiative uh, for women to connect, learn, and advance as programmers. By community-led, we mean three things. Uh, we are not a registered school, not an NGO, and not a company. Okay, we're all volunteers with our own full-time jobs, and we rely entirely on the support of our volunteers and the community. So at Tech Ladies, we believe that technology is for everyone. Uh, the industry currently is sadly, male-dominated, and our hope is to provide women a way to experience programming. Okay, so that said, we are not anti-men. Uh, we are just women-focused. Men are important allies, and they too have something to contribute. In fact, if you look around the room, a lot of our volunteers today, and even our coaches, one of our coaches is a man. So Lawrence, photographer. <laughs> uh, we've got Michael, and we've got Chion. There we are, Chion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whether you are someone who is exploring the industry, uh, learning how to code, or someone who's already in the industry, we've got something for you here. Okay, so in Tech Ladies, we enable uh, women through three channels, uh, through community, through education, and through opportunity. Great. So starting with community, we, we had hoped that in this channel, we provide a space for women uh, to find their peers in tech so that they can connect and share through share experiences and knowledge. So we go out, and we eat, because we need to eat and all that. So it's, so, so it's more social than it is uh, educational. So within the second pillar of education, we've got tech study, tech lady study and coding weekend, uh, which is sort of like uh, short workshops or events that we organize uh, to, uh, on a subject or any of that to help our ladies. In fact, this weekend, we have a coding weekend in Penang itself. So in our final pillar, we have the opportunity, and that's our Tech Talks and our boot camp. I will share a little bit about the boot camp in a bit. Uh, but with Tech Talks, basically, we provide that uh, environment for women to um, sort of come and give talks to build their confidence uh, and to meet peers of other, like their peers as well. So there you have it, three pillars, six programs, and hopefully more to come. Right, so what is the Tech Ladies Bootcamp, right? It is a part-time programming bootcamp uh, designed to help women with little to no coding background to switch careers into the tech industry. Uh, this is a hands-on learning experience. You will work in groups of three, uh, led by a head coach, to work on one project for one NGO. So win-win situation for everyone. So since the uh, inception in 2016, we've hosted four bootcamps so far. Uh, we've got m about 30 women who have graduated from the boot camp. So eight of these women uh, currently have roles within the industry, uh, full-time, be it full-time, internship, or part-time. Uh, through this boot camp, we have also helped nine non-profit orgs uh, by building applications for them. And some of the examples are we have done uh, film submission apps, we've done apps for adoption, we've done classroom management apps, uh, we've done donor management apps, etc. So our previous boot camps were taught in Ruby on Rails. What's exciting uh, and different this time around is that we'll be tackling JavaScript. Uh, as with the previous boot camps, we, there will be two NGOs. For each of the NGOs, there will be three participants, three coaches, uh, and then we'll have a team of three designers to support these two NGOs. So in a few minutes, we will be inviting the NGOs to come and give you a short presentation on what they do uh, and, how, and the project that they are working with Tech Ladies on. But first, can I introduce you to our coaches and our designers? 
So six coaches this time around, Qian, Huizing, and Yishu. Can you just wave? There you go. <laughs> so they will be helping our first NGO, the Sustainable Solutions Network. And then we've got Amanda Saloni and Jin Qi, who will be teaching, uh, who will be helping the second NGO, who is Center for a Responsible Future. Okay. So our designers this time round are Esther, Weiman, and Pearlie. Uh, they will be looking after and supporting all the UI/UX visual parts of that. So you'll be able to find more details about our coaches and our designers on the Tech Ladies website. Okay, without further ado, let's welcome our first team, Sustainable Solutions Network. Hi everyone, I'm Ing Tong. Uh, and I'm Jeffrey. And we're from the Sustainable Solutions Network. So we're actually working with Amanda Saloni and Jin Chi. Yeah, um, so the Sustainable Solutions Network is basically uh, a one-stop portal for environmental organizations in Singapore. And our vision is to connect local sustainability projects and initiatives so that they can share resources and so that they can collaborate and actually come up with new projects. Some of our existing features are a database of um, green groups, uh, a collection of funding opportunities, uh, environmental profiles, as well as event reviews. Uh, our past projects have included an environmental personality quiz that actually shows you what kind of environmental change maker you are. And the events we host include meetups and sharing sessions. So our role is really as a facilitator in the environmental scene. Now, our involvement with Tech Ladies comes in when we realize that our, we, we're facing a problem which is that we can't really scale our facilitation efforts just because we're the ones uh, maintaining manually these databases and these stores of information. And instead, we want to move it to a more crowdsourced and decentralized way of getting this information. And we want to build a collaboration platform that is by the community and for the community. Instead of centrally maintaining it, we want to open up the maintenance to everyone who's actually going to benefit from it. Right, so uh, over here you can actually see some of the uh, features on our website. So these are basically screenshots right now with what we have on our website, ssnsingapore.org. So as Ying Tong mentioned, the database of environmental organizations. Uh, so anyone who visits our website can actually um, scroll through just uh, these organizations. Also, we also host the uh, Lay Park in SG Calendar, which is a display of all the environmental uh, events that uh, are taking place in Singapore. Um, but of course, as Sing Tong mentioned, there isn't a way right now to uh, scale up this uploading and sharing of information uh, and resources. Yeah. And with Tech Ladies, we hope to build a portal for volunteers as well as for project initiators to maintain a database that is updated in real time, that is comprehensive, and that can show people what's going on in the environmental scene right now. Yeah, that's all from us. Thank you. Uh, can we now invite the coaches, the ThoughtWorks coaches, to speak a little bit more about how they are helping the NGO? Hello. So I'm Jin Xi, uh, one of the coaches for the team uh, building an app for the Singapore Sustainable Network, Sustainable Solutions Network, sorry, of Sing from Singapore. So. Uh, we are a team of three coaches from ThoughtWorks. So, like I said, I'm Jin Si. Uh, I am a software developer. I started at ThoughtWorks at the start of this year. And I also coached the last batch of tech ladies, teaching them to build an app in Ruby on Rails, which is actually the app that we are using for your application process this year. So yes, the things that you built for this bootcamp will be used, uh, will be used by your NGOs and maintained in the future. 
So uh, I've also been teaching um, people uh, beginners programming for various things like in, in my university and such. So I have quite a bit of experience uh, teaching beginners programming. And my colleagues, Saloni and Amanda, would also like to introduce themselves. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Saloni. And I have uh, two plus years of experience in software development. And I believe that teaching is uh, a very good way to learn actually. So uh, why this bootcamp, we will both, I mean, we'll all be learning together. And I hope you guys seize this opportunity. And yep, hope to see all of you soon in the bootcamp. Uh, pass to Amanda. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a really bad call. Um, so I'll keep this short. Um, so I'm a software developer with ThoughtWorks too. I've been working there for about one and a half years. So I kind of started on a more like unconventional path. I used to be in banking for about five years before I signed up for a web immersive program. So I've also like I've been learning. Um, it's been a really rewarding journey, kind of tough. I had a really steep learning curve. So I really want to lend a hand to anyone who wants to go down this path too. Because um, I think it's been really rewarding and I think you'll see that and you'll find that if you join the bootcamp. So um, yeah, looking forward to meeting all of you. Awesome, thank you. So I think one, one really cool thing that you'll notice about our team is that for the first time, all the coaches are ladies. So we have had four, yes, please clap. So we've had four Tech Ladies bootcamps so far and I think for the first two boot camps, all the coaches were male. We finally had two female coaches for the last boot camp. I was one of them. And finally, we actually have a Tech Ladies team that really feels more like a Tech Ladies team this time. So, awesome. Thank you very much. So, what will you build if you join you know, our team? Basically, we are building, uh, like Intel uh, has already explained, a platform for SSN, which is, which it's a platform for environmental organizations to post their projects. So as an organization, you're going to be able to log in. Um, sorry. Yeah, so as an uh, organization, you can be able to log in and set up, set up an account and log in and post any kind of uh, projects that you want uh, volunteers for. And as a volunteer on the public, you'll be able to browse, search, and filter these projects. And also these projects will be vetted by an admin, an SSN admin, like Ingtong herself, before they are, they are able to go live. So this is like the rough uh, overview of how a user would uh, use this app. And these are the beautiful mocks that our design, uh, designer volunteers have put up. So you can imagine that this is like the, the home page, the landing page for a person from the public uh, to view all the projects. And this would be a page for a single project. So they can see all the project details, the organization's details, and they are able to volunteer for it and see what kind of issues this organization is actually tackling. So with that, I know, right? It's really beautiful. Thank you, designers. With that, uh, you may be like, OK, that sounds simple enough as a user. Like, it's quite a standard kind of like Kickstarter platform kind of thing. People post stuff, and then you view them, right? And you sign up. But OK, maybe you're like, tell me something I don't know. So from a technical point of view, what are we going to, what do you have to learn to build this app? So firstly, it's a very basic, uh, very standard like CRUD, what we call a CRUD app. So create, read, update, delete. Uh, most web apps these days are very standard. So as an organizer, you can create a project, you can view the project, you can update the project, and then you can like, delete the project. So it's, it's going to be that kind of pretty standard uh, CRUD web app. And the tech, tech stack that we're going for, this bootcamp is going to be React on the front end. So this is the, this is the view layer that's actually what the user interacts with and sees. And the data, it's going to the data is going to be handled by a Node.js and Express backend server. So this is the part that deals with more like the business logic, data validation, and, and the, persistence is going to, the persistence layer is basically this database called MongoDB. So this is a NoSQL database uh, that will basically store the data that we need to save in this app. For example, the projects that we're going to save to the database or the organizations that we're going to save to the database. And, and while, it's all, while it's all good to you know, build an app and that you can see working locally on your machine, it's not much point if it's only going to work on your machine. So obviously, we're going to have to deploy this to the, world, to the web for everyone to admire your work. And for this, we're going to use uh, this service called Heroku. So it's a platform as a service that allows developers to deploy applications on the cloud. 
So basically, there'll be a server running the code for your app and serving it to the, for the world to see. So I see all of you nodding your heads, and I think, OK, good to go. I'm ready, right? Um, but it's not, you know, it's not just quite just all of that. I mean, that's all the that's the specific technologies that we'll be using. But underlying all of that, there's actually a lot of things. Right? There's a lot more things for you to learn. So some of these things include, I'm waiting for Mike to take the picture. <laughs> some of these things include, you know, JavaScript fun and programming fundamentals, like how to think algorithmically, how to model your pro problems and solve them in code. Um, and general software development principles, like writing clean code, testing your code that you write, version control, uh, continuous integration. That means like if you have multiple people developing different features in parallel and how, how to integrate that, those features together seamlessly as you work on the project. And also project management, like how, how are we going to split up our tasks, analyze the tasks that we need to do in, in, forms of, in the form of user stories and assign them to different people to parallelize our work. Uh, and also like domain modeling. So how do we model uh, the business domain in, in the form in which we can transform it into code? And also, very importantly, teamwork and communication. These are super important things for developers and programmers, in case you didn't know. And hopefully, we'll be able to impart to you the skills to learn how to learn and the confidence to do so. So uh, with that, it may feel like, oh my god, it's uh, quite overwhelming. And maybe I, I just name drop all these technologies, and you're like, what is, what is all of this? And I agree that it's, uh, it's may, it may be slightly overwhelming for beginners, but don't worry. We are here to help you and to teach you. Uh, and I think just it does only since it's a part-time bootcamp, there's a limit to how much you can absorb and how much you can teach within this uh, limited time. But I just hope you can treat this bootcamp as a, your springboard into your future, you know, opportunities and careers, career in tech. So with that, I wish you all the best for your application process, and we're looking forward to work and teach those of you who make it for this bootcamp. So thank you. Can we now invite our second NGO Center for a Responsible Future? Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Ashwarya from the Center for a Responsible Future. Right. Um, so our mission is to engage people and organizations in Singapore to adopt responsible practices for a better future for all of us. Um, you may be familiar with some of our initiatives, uh, which are Vegetarian Society, Animal Allies, um, Alliance for a Responsible Future, and EarthFest. So um, what we're looking to do uh, to work with the te tech ladies is for EarthFest. So EarthFest is our annual plant-based sustainability event. We've had about uh, three runs. Um, and it uh, features talks by sustainability experts. We bring in community partners from, you know, the nonprofit groups, uh, other schools, and um, it also has a plant-based food bazaar, right? And um, like I mentioned, we also have uh, exhibits and things from local schools. So, um, oh, can I play this? This is a glimpse of how uh, EarthFest is. Has anyone been to EarthFest earlier? You have? Okay. Yeah, the, um, the festival is it's amazing. You know, everybody here is super happy. The energy here is just, it's a very positive energy. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's amazing.
Okay, so that's EarthFest. So, so far it has been um, a single day event that we do once a year. And we realize that you know, there's uh, so much interest into adopting sustainable and uh, green practices that we felt that we need to uh, expand it beyond the one day event. So what we're doing this year is to expand EarthFest into Earth Life uh, with six different components. So there are six different components, are zero waste, biophilia, uh, carbon positive, minimalism, advocacy, and plant based. So we're hoping to uh, build a series of activities that lead to EarthFest and also uh, have a platform that uh, gives people resources uh, about the six components of Earth Life. Um, so we're looking to educate and increase the awareness on personal actions that people can take on how to become green. And uh, we want to build a community that is committed to being sustainable, um, as well as to provide resources and tips on how to focus on the different components of Earth life. And uh, the resources will also include uh, a self-assessment uh, tool and suggested actions that you can take. So that's where the Tech Ladies team uh, comes in. Um, so currently what happens is EarthFest is just a single events page. So if you go in, there's not much details, uh, right? And most of the traffic that comes to EarthFest is during, you know, just before the festival itself or immediately after. The rest of the year, it's quite idle. Um, and uh, we don't have any uh, dedicated IT staff or, uh, you know, person managing it. So if volunteers are available, we have about two or three. So if they're available, they help us, you know, do updates to the website and things like that. So with um, whoever comes into the boot camp, we hope that you can expand um, the Earth Life part of the website, uh, build the different uh, self-assessment components um, that will help us to engage our audience better. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwarya. Can we invite the coaches to come speak? Okay, hi everyone. So we are the second team. Uh, I'm Hui Jing, the one in the middle. If no resemblance, never mind. Uh, so our lead coach is Chion. Uh, so I would like to invite Chion to come up and show his face. So as you can see, unlike the first team, we have an honorary sister as our head coach. Yes. And uh, the, the third coach is Ishu, so I also want Ishu to come out and show her face. Thank you, thank you. Um, so all three of us are front-end engineers, and the task, like both teams have rather similar uh, learning opportunities. The key difference between the first project and our project is that ours will be a bit more front-end front heavy, meaning um, there's not that much of a, a back-end, unlike the first project. It's, ra it's really very front-end focused, and I'll, we'll explain a bit more later. So I will let Chion introduce himself, because head coach. Hello, uh, hello everyone. I'm Chian. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not sure why I'm not a head coach, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm kind of like quite experienced, like more, more experienced than the rest, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so, and I'm, uh, I think I'm the only guy in the, the only sister, <laughs> the only sister in the, in the all-lady uh, coaches. Yeah, so I kind of like, my daily job is just front-end, 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 so it's like, yeah, so that's much, I don't know what to say. <laughs> what to say. <laughs> uh, I'm Ishu, uh, this is my sixth year as a software engineer. Um, I started off as a mobile engineer, iOS. So, but then now I'm moving more to front end. So front end web, yeah. Yeah, I just dragged them up here to like, you know, put them in the spot. Um, for myself, I'm also front end engineer. So like I mentioned, can okay, I go back? Um, so I, I also work as a front end engineer in my day job, and um, I've done this for I've done this since 2013, but I, like formally employed, but like been doing it as for fun, friends and family before that. So as you can see, add together, there's a lot of years of front end, so that's why the project that we're in charge of is a very front end heavy uh, project. So what, are we, what will we be doing? Like, 
as you understood just now, like Earth Fest is a one, once a year thing. Um, but one of the key things that they want to move towards is to have a sort of more of a daily, like a lifestyle, day-to-day -day thing, rather than just, you know, being uh, socially responsible for one day of the, or, 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 like one week of the year sort of thing. So one small step toward doing this, because again, it's a, it's a volunteer-led organization. We can't expect like, oh, big project. So one small step toward doing this is we're going to build an interactive quiz. So think BuzzFeed, the like, what type of broomstick are you sort of thing, but better. So, <laughs> what? Uh, so it's an interactive quiz, and the flow is relatively straightforward when, when, when you look at the wireframes, but there's a lot more complexity to it, so we'll talk about that later. But the, the gist of it, very straightforward, start the quiz, the six components of Earth life, and you'll answer a series of questions. So you'll get an assessment. Again, like I said, what type of broomstick are you, but better? Uh, and, and then part of it is you, you get a selection of actions. So you sort of, they, they are call to actions from, after the BuzzFeed quiz, you just share on Facebook, and then you're like, okay, my friend knows that I am a very, good looking broomstick and that's it. But this one, there's a one more step which is like choose actions and you'll get an action plan. So that's, that's the high level gist of it. But because this is a very front end um, heavy sort of project, one of the key challenges you will end up facing is that with visual heavy and design, design heavy projects, everybody has an opinion. Like if it's mostly back end, people at most they can just say, um yeah, okay, I guess a dashboard is a dashboard, so fair enough, carry on. But when you have a design heavy project, everybody and your cat has an opinion. Like, I don't think my cat likes this particular shade of green. So so one of the things that we'll we'll you'll face is how to clearly articulate the constraints because this is a 12-week project. We can't change the world in 12 weeks. So other than the hard technical skills here, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is the foundation of anything you see on the web, that's what you will learn. Interactive quiz has to have some animation, so that will be quite interesting. And um, of course, similar to the first group, there's key software principles that no matter what type of project you work on, you cannot run away from. Like versioning, that's the Git part. There's development, test, deployment, and you do it again. So that's standard. And of course, to have clean code. So yeah. So part of the thing is how, how do you make this attractive? How do you make this something that people want to click on? So, so again, this is a more visual heavy uh, front end focus kind of thing. So animations are a must, potentially, this is something that we end up doing, how to do all these animations and things like that. The less technical part of things is similar to the first group. You have to learn how to manage the project. You have to manage client expectations. As a team, we obviously have to learn how to work together because when you write all write code to the same project, um, you realize that if you don't think about your teammates, the code will become very messy, so that's part of the learning. And you also realize that what appears to be a simple project usually ends up very complicated. So you may end up in the top right corner situation. And the most important lesson is resilience. Because at the end of the day, not, it will not be smooth. Like I, I'm sure most of you are working professionals, you understand this, that most of the time, 80% the work is like thankless. But sometimes 20% of the time, you'll get like exciting things happening. So this pretty much is the same. Uh, so that's the soft skills part of it. And so hopefully this interests you. Uh, even though the coaches seem a bit anyhowly, well, that's because we are finance engineers and we are not really public speakers. So. Um, Trust us on this, and uh, I will hand this off to Shalane to continue the Tech Ladies thing.
Okay, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Shalane. I'm the other organizer for the Tech Ladies Bootcamp Number Four. So these are the key dates for the Tech Ladies Bootcamp Number Four. Um, if you want, you can take a photo of it first. Else, it will be available on the website. Um, so let me run through it. So today, the application will open and it will close on the 13th of August. Um, in between, in July, on the 14th, 21th, and 28th, uh, we will have the pre bootcamp workshops. Um, where we will cover the stacks used for the technical task submissions and also used to build the project itself. Um, between July and August, dates to be confirmed, we will have code clinics. So over here, um, we'll probably have two sessions. Um, the coaches will be available um, at the code clinics to go through any problem that you might face when building your applications. Um, okay, and then the actual session will start on the 1st of September and will run till 17th of November. Um, this bookend will run um, every single Saturday. And then uh, we're looking at the graduation party in 2019 in January. Yep, so let me take you through the application process. Um, give me a minute. Uh. Okay, so um, sometime tonight or tomorrow morning, um, there will be a link on the main Tech Ladies website to apply for the, for the bootcamp. So what you'll see is that you click on the link and then you'll reach this page. Um, program details, the stuff that I covered earlier on will be available here and you'll get to see the coach's bio and all that over here. Uh, what we need you to do is to click on apply and then you'll see this bootcamp for and then you apply for this. So. Um, the application form has like three sections. The first two session, uh, sections actually ask you about your particulars and some other background questions. Um, the important part is to, at the end of section two, you'll get to choose which NGO you want to work with. So you can choose SSN, um, CRF, or you can choose any team if you don't have a preference. Um, okay, so section three is the technical task. So this is the important section. You have a few to fill in over here. Um, after your technical task completion, you have to fill in your GitHub repo URL or your Dropbox link. So if you do not fill in this field when you submit your application form, your application form will be deemed incomplete and then we will just like not process it. So please fill this up, very important. Okay, um, over here you can click on the here button. This will take you to the link with the technical task requirements. So, yep, you can read through this whole thing, but let me summarize it. The technical task will um, be, in, uh, be, be built using like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We have three levels for that. So we have the basic level. So the first level, you just have to build an About Me page, a to-do list in React, uh, to build in React.js, which is a front-end JavaScript framework, and also a navigation bar to navigate between the two pages. So that, this is just purely a front-end app. If you decide to, you know, you want to take up more challenge, um, you can go for the bonus task where you have to create um, a to-do list and save it to a database. So for this, you probably have to deal with like Node.js and um, using the Express um, framework and also with the MongoDB um, database. And the last um, level, level three, is the brownie task point where you are just try to deploy your app onto Heroku. And then from there, the coaches are able to look at your application on the website itself, on, on, the, on the web itself. So, I mean, if all this look daunting to you, don't worry, because we are here to help you. Okay, we're, not, we're not here to deter you to apply for the bootcamp. Um, you can find the resources to whatever you need um, at the bottom of the requirement um, info sheet. And also, um, during the pre bootcamp and the code clinics, feel free to ask any of the coaches who, will, who are all here to help you. Uh, yeah. Um, if you have any other questions regarding the task, not bugs, uh, just task, um, you can email me or pay me now. Uh, bugs, I don't know whether we can help you, but task requirements, I think we can. Um, if you have any other questions, you can join our Facebook group and then you can just post there. Um, usually, the response there is quite fast. So yeah, let me go back to the slide. Where's the slide? Where's the slide?
<laughs> so, so yeah, so I think uh, most of you are already on our Tech Ladies um, group page. Um, feel free to join us. We actually have two pages, so it's a bit confusing, but we have a community page with quite a lot of people. And we also have a private group, which is the Tech Ladies group. So the difference between that is that we don't spam the community group, we spam the group, the Tech Ladies group. Uh, we share articles and then Elijah will post links from time to time uh, for like say free tickets exclusive to Tech Ladies members. So yeah, feel free to join us over there. And yeah, we are also looking for volunteers. So if I may digress a bit, um, that's uh, Hui Mei myself um, in the photo. So yeah, so we were participants of the last boot camp. So boot camp number three, this one is boot camp number four. So we just graduated like the start of this year. And I think like coming from, uh, coming as a participant from the past boot camp, we can really, really tell you that we, be we benefited a lot from the last boot camp. Um, we basically had a one-to-one -one teacher student ratio. So it's like a men full on mentorship for like 12 weeks at a very minimal cost. I, I dare say there is no program in Singapore that actually does this. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> So for, yeah, so it's also through Tech Ladies that we got to know a lot of members in the community, in the larger tech community, and um, a lot of people have actually heard about this Tech Ladies initiative. Um, so yeah, we're very grateful to be part of this organization. Um, the coaches, the designers, all of us are actually holding full-time jobs, but we take time out to volunteer for these initiatives. So of course, we, we also have to thank the sponsors. You know, without the sponsors, you won't get a nice venue and a nice food. But we are always on the lookout for more volunteers. If you believe that this is a cause that, you know, um, to help more women get into the tech industry, more beginners get into the tech industry, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be very willing to and very happy to talk to you. Yeah, so, yeah, if that is all, I hope you guys enjoyed the info session and the food. And we look forward to receiving your applications very soon. Thank you. So, um, you, if you all have any questions, feel free to ask. We have a few goodie bags. Um, yeah. Oh, ask a question, get a goodie bag. Yeah. Nice deal, right? Oh, hey, Jin Ti, you are a coach, so. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, tell me, so, so this bootcamp application thing, right? Tell me more about it. Who, who built it, I wonder? <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> We don't want to boast, la, but we actually built it. <laughs> with the help of, so Jin Chi was from the previous batch. Uh, she was also a coach with the previous batch. She was an assistant coach. So this time around, she's taking a full on uh, role as a coach. So yeah, we built that application form for use for the, this current bootcamp and the subsequent bootcamps. Yes? Uh, we actually use Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Yeah, so this time around, we're using JavaScript, so it's an entirely different. Thank you. Anything else? Is it Windows, uh, is it Windows uh, iOS, or uh, Android, um, or common? So, so these are yeah, apps that live on the web. So with any browser, more or less, you can, you can use it. But when building itself, um, you can use a Windows laptop, you can use a Mac laptop. Then the coaches will kind of help you configure your development environment to help you develop the app. But it's easier, it's easier with a Mac. Don't see, I see that. <laughs> Shalene, over there. Can I just ask, um, how do you decide whether to focus more on front end or back end? Okay. Yeah. So for the last few boot camps, right, what we've been doing is that we've always gone for full stack. If you realize that one, two, three, right, we always go for like full stack, full stack, full stack. But then what, what we realize is that it's very difficult for for a newbie, like somebody who never coded before, to come out and actually find a job as a full stack developer in the industry. You realize, right, if you're going to apply for jobs, right, somehow the openings are all for front ends. So that's why this time around we thought, you know, since we're doing JavaScript, why not um, we, we, we do a front end team? Because we have like three, these three are like the best three front end people in Singapore. As in, honestly, they are like the top, top people in Singapore. <laughs> Hui Ting over there, she runs uh, Singapore CSS, uh, C the CSS talk every single month. So you can go and go for the talks as well. Yeah, okay, this Thursday there's one uh, at Carousel, right? Yes. Okay, at Carousel. 
Yeah, so issue will be there as well. And then Chion is the one that started Copy.js, which is a meetup for JavaScript. So these people are really solid ones. So yeah. So, uh, so for, for myself, I mean, if I may share, like, after I graduated from the boot camp, um, I also applied for a finance, finance job and got it. So it, it's also a finance position. So I found it, um, the technical tasks that they ask during interviews and stuff, the front end tasks are a lot more doable. In my opinion, you know, there are people that got full stack. Um, roles, la, but that's why we have a front end team this, like, this time around. Yeah. Thank you for the question. So, do you want to answer? Sorry, repeat. I just want to know whether uh, is it like uh, upon us whether we want to choose for uh, go for front end or back end, or is it it is what you decide? Well, it depends on what you choose uh, in in your application form. Whether you have a preference, a strong preference for team one, team two, or you have no preference. If you have no preference, then. Uh, it's dependent on the coaches how they will select you. Yeah. Oops. No, if you choose like any team, then like coaches from both teams are able to choose yeah. you. Maybe a coach can answer you. Do you want a full stack coach? Yeah. Okay. So I think it really depends on your um, your application, like the technical tasks that you submit in, and um, we will evaluate that and based on uh, the potential that we see, and and also based on your own preference that you indicate. We the different teams will will choose uh, accordingly, but it doesn't mean that just because you chose uh, SSN that you cannot get the opportunity to be selected if SSN is really full and the other team needs people. So it's really just like we will see who is suitable for, for that particular team and choose accordingly. Yeah. So don't, like, don't worry that if I choose as an end, I, will, I, cannot, I cannot ever get in for the other team. Yeah. Any more questions? No one wants a goodie bag? <laughs> That there's a there's a comment. So y'all may think that like six participants that we are choosing out of like the last time around we had 86 applicants that the chances very low. Then y'all don't want to apply kind of thing. Um, I would say like just don't be scared and just try because you really never know. Like the coaches have never met the participants before they chose them. So it's really based on gut, uh, the questions that you are answered and the, the the technical tasks that you submitted that they'll base their decision. The decision on uh, so just just try uh. yeah. Um, just um, piggybacking off the other lady's question. So if we submit, let's say, um, we do the technical tasks and we submit more on the front end, will we be considered more likely for a front end, um, for the front end role rather than the back end? Clear one more round. The SSN team is the team that's doing the full stack. The EarthFest team is the team that's doing the front end. So when you apply, you can, yeah. Can you elaborate briefly, like what's the evaluation criteria in the selection of the candidates? Can you evaluate what is the uh, sorry? Can can you elaborate what is the evaluation criteria in the selection of the candidates? Okay, so uh, so based on last last year, uh, it's really based on a lot of it's based definitely on the technical task. So we evaluate. That's more for us to evaluate what's the amount of time and effort that you can put in for this. So n not really so much about technical capability, although there's also definitely some of that, but because we recognize that for you to actually build something, something full and working, that really takes a lot of time and dedication. So that's really an indication of 
how much you're willing to put in to learn uh, and to get into this industry and how much effort you're willing to put into this bootcamp. Uh, in addition to that, also, there are, there are some questions that Shalin showed just now in the form that uh, ask more about your personal background, like why you why you interested in tech ladies, what you hope to get out of it. So we also evaluate your potential based on those questions. But, you know, those are free form up to you to answer based on how, uh, you, you know, just, just don't be afraid to answer something that will sound wrong or something. It's like, uh, just to help us get a feel of why you're in, why, why you're interested in this boot, uh, bootcamp. Let's wait, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, okay, so just to, I, I realize that a lot of people are very concerned about the whole, oh, selection criteria, or this is a test, but um, I guess my comment is that if you're not sure, and this is something that's completely new to you, it's, we have, that's the point of the pre-bootcamp workshops. So it's, uh, it's free for all, you know, the, the pre-bootcamp workshops, there's no selection criteria, you know, bring your, bring your friends, bring your kids, bring your cat, and sort of like get a feel of what you would expect, because maybe, Maybe there'll be some of you like, eh, it's not really for me. But at least you've gone through like about three sessions, you learned something for free, that's great. And for the rest of you, you might sort of say, like, mm, this particular aspect is a bit more interesting to me. And then you can sort of evaluate your own interest based on that. Because honestly, now to ask you all to choose is a bit not fair. It's like asking your 10 year old, like, kid, decide what you want to be for the rest of your life. Like, cannot la, 10 year old, how you know, right? So same thing, it's like you, you come for the pre bootcamp workshops and you sort of just understand a bit more and so that you can make a more informed decision about, okay, I think I kind of more interested in how the, like the back-end stuff works or it's, like it's something that's more relevant to what I'm doing now, like all sorts of reasons. Or you could be like, oh, okay, I think front end quite exciting. Then, mm -hmm. And it, so it, it will help you inform the decision if you show up for the pre uh, bootcamp thing. As for the tasks, right, um, we, we, you, you do have to understand that at the end of the day, we are delivering something real for real clients. I'm going to call them clients because that's exactly what they are. And so there has to be a level of commitment. And if it's something that you feel that it's not interesting enough for you to be committed, then maybe don't. Because at the end of the day, even though this is a, supposed to be a learning opportunity, there are some real uh, results that we want out of it. Like there are actual products and actual clients and actual expectations that come out of it. And in, to be honest, that's the best way to learn. Because there's, if you've attempted to sort of like, oh, how do I get started in front? And then you'll be bombarded by a lot of information. So my take on it, and, and what I always tell like, people who are new to this, is that it's good to know of things. Don't have to learn them until you need them. And that's the point of why we have real clients and real NGOs and real products. So you will learn something, not everything, but something that is very specific and very practical and something that delivers an actual product. And from there, because you've gained a bit of knowledge, you can go on, move on to the next project and then learn something else. I think, so for the whole technical task thing, um, I guess there is a base requirement and if there's something like a bonus task, there's something that you feel, pick something that you're more interested in. Like, don't pick something that you look at it and then it's like, I don't feel like doing this. Because it, it's, it's not that easy. Even for those of us who are experienced, right, every other day, I, I, I'm throwing things at my screen. Because it's, it's a relatively frustrating career choice. Um, <laughs> but the reason why we can come back and do it the next day, other than the fact that we are paid to do it, and like, my bank account likes it, is also the fact that at the end of the day, actually, I do kind of like doing this like yeah so if it's something that you you really really, uh, really don't want to then then really don't so so try to find some an area where it's something that you're a bit more interested in then you go and pursue that path and yeah worst come to worst just show up for all the free pre bootcamp sessions and then like it's co also quite worth it lies like, budget of zero right so yeah Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the pre workshop workshops are not free. <laughs> just, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah. But, um, can, uh, can I? Yeah, just to add on. To for the pre bookend workshops? Oh, for the bookend itself? Uh, yes, the official days are Saturdays. Um, but depending on the team, we may, you can like make arrangements within the team depending on the coaches' availability and stuff. Lah. So. 
Yeah, so the commitment that we require uh, is, is 12 weeks, uh, and it's about 10 to 15 hours per week with uh, three three hour blocks on Saturdays that you actually work with the coaches and sit with the coaches. But you are definitely expected to work uh, throughout the week. Yeah. The so the rest time. the rest of the Saturday the rest of the week uh, you'll be doing your own like self study and reading and all that. Okay. Sorry, one question from you. Yeah. Um, so the first pre boot camp workshop uh, was stated on 14th of July. Is there any way to reach out before that? Is there any way to sorry? Is there any way to reach out to you guys before that? Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. Oh, join the Facebook group. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, also, th there were links um, to learn how, uh, how to code. Uh, does it also state how to kind of like download the software on your laptop and get started with it? Some of the tutorials might contain setup instructions, but um, we can add more specific stuff for that, I guess, if, if, that, if you think that would be an issue. Okay. So don't worry, so we'll update that. We may, we'll, we may up be updating the technical task page. I mean, the, the, the task as a whole will stay more, it's the same, but we may add like certain link, more links and stuff uh, as the weeks go by. Great. Thank you. Which one of you is from zero? From zero to hero, you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Okay. So I, I didn't study CS in school. Uh, completely unrelated. I took some coding classes, some. Um, but and I also just to encourage everyone, I did not do the bonus points in my technical task. <laughs> but I still got it, so I don't know why. You can ask Jinsi. <laughs> yeah, so I hope that's an encouragement. You, you don't necessarily, I think what the, the, the coaches look for is really just like sort of drive and, and passion. They are trying to get you into the tech industry. Um, so don't be discouraged by all, just, just apply. Yeah. Also to add on to uh, Huizing's point earlier and also what I said about treat this as a springboard. So it's just the beginning. Uh, it's just a room, a platform for you to explore. You may not, you may find at the end of it, Maybe I'm not cut out to be a developer. That's fine. Some of the ladies, they move on, not in the tech industry, not in a dev role, per se, but they want to be project managers or like other yeah, technical sales. So having at least uh, appreciation of the technical aspect will definitely help you even if you choose to go into tech, but not as a developer. Yeah, you don't have to worry. I, when I got into the boot camp, I got scolded for my indentation because developers are very particular about how they indent their code. So I really had no idea about it at all. Disclaimer, I never scold you. <laughs> I never said it was her, but well, now you know. <laughs> so, so, no, uh, so I graduated with uh, zero background. I, I graduated with a sports science degree, and then I was a pet groomer before I started coding. So it's a very manual job. I didn't use my brains for like five years, that kind of thing. And then I had to use my brains again. So, yeah. It, it, so, I mean, I think what they are really looking for, if you ask me, is the drive la, to want it bad enough. Like for me I really wanted it. So like, I completed everything. Like everything. So I just just went out, just like just I literally spent eight hours trying to push it up to Heroku. That that's how much I wanted it. To Heroku, you know the, the, the part whereby you have to push it up to deploy it to Heroku. You will encounter the, the a lot of points. errors, yeah. You you always encounter a lot of errors when you code. Like it's a given thing. So, but to not give up and to try for that extra half an hour that led to two hours, that led to three hours, you know, that kind of thing. It's really up to you how much you want it. Yeah. Okay, everyone, I'm zero. Okay, so, um, yeah, I don't know if I can actually get to hero. But um, the thing is, um, if I actually go through the pre boot camp workshops as well as code clinics, right? Um, I mean, given that I'm a trained accountant, I'm definitely very OCD and all that, right? So, um, have you actually had an accountant who is like very on and all that, but zero, like pass through and actually, you know, s successfully develop something? Amanda because used to be from a bank. <laughs> uh, my degree is finance. It's hanging on my dad's wall. That's all it's good for. Like, yeah, I did not make it rain. Like, I'm not a software developer that is struggling to increase my CPF. 
So I also graduated with a banking and finance degree. So I worked in banking for five years. When I started this, I, had n I knew nothing about HTML, CSS. So it's like at the end of the day, even if you graduate with a computer science degree, right? Like what they mentioned, every single day, we'll be like banging our heads, we'll be like encountering all these errors. There are many things that we're still learning every single day. So it's kind of that determination that is going to bring you from, I guess you want to call it zero to hero. But every day, there's a little bit that you learn. And you'll actually be really astounded at the end of the day, one year later, or even after the boot camp, when you look back and you realize how much you've learned accumu like, accumulatively every single day just through that determination. And I think that's what you're going to feel really proud of at the end of the boot camp when you build this working product and you see it go live. And that's actually when I started. So, okay, maybe I'm talking a bit too much, but when I started, I wanted to join fintech. I didn't really think I'll become a developer. So I thought maybe I'll go into a product managerial role, like, like just understand the technical aspect of things. But I ended up really liking it. So that's how I kind of developed that. But you kind of learn that you like it like every single day as you do it, like a little bit more, a little bit more. So like don't think too much about it, I think. I think like the web and what you encounter can be very intimidating. And I still am every single day when I meet like an error or a bug. So don't think too much about it. I think you should just try it and come for the pre bootcamp workshops. Just get through that and see whether that's enough to take you to the next step. So I think thinking about it is not like doesn't do me much favors and maybe you might find the same. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. Make it this time round. Is it a once a year thing? Uh, is it a once a year thing? <laughs> that avoiding eye contact. Yeah, it's going to be a once a year thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to finish everything before December because we want to go on holiday. So, <laughs> but in terms of timing, usually we start about about June is about about right. Uh, we start with the info session and get everything ready, and then like in Q3, that's when the boot camp. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. So in terms of just to answer the previous question, so some of our graduates, um, one is asked with us, and then she went for an internship, uh, in developer internship, decided that she didn't like it. So she's now a project manager, still in the tech industry. Um, again, asked with us. So, um, so and another was a customer service rep. So she was answering phone calls. Now she's a developer. So there are people from all walks of life. Even Michael, uh, he he. All, He's not the AV guy. He's not okay. He's not just the AV guy. So, <laughs> so he he he's the sort of he organizes the PHP meetup, also the PHP programming conference. So he has been in the industry for over a decade. Tell us what what you majored in university. History and political science. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's been it's a rep repetitive theme there. You know, you don't really need a CS degree. Um, to be part of this industry. Having said that, it's still hard work. Lah. Other questions? <coughs> I, really, I really think that this kind of book camp is really benefiting. So um, why only take six participants? And will, why only take six participants? And is there any chance to take more? Why are you answer? <laughs> So I think between, like, with Shalane and I, I we found that one-to-one -one mentorship is really just, like, amazing. Um, of course, we want to achieve that balance of benefiting the tech ladies as well as just ma making sure the tech ladies have, 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 like, full value and maximum value of joining this boot camp. So we thought that six is a good number. Um, I mean, if we have the resources and capacity... Six. Three. Six in total, so, so three, three ladies team. for each team. So I mean, next year, if we have more volunteers to help out or more co coaches, then we can take on more NGOs, then potentially we can take on more tech ladies. Yeah, but for now, we are capping at six. Yeah, so. I think it took us about three months plus of work to come to today, um, yeah. contacting like 200 over NGOs just to find the right one. Um, so the previous batch, we had, I think, six NGOs. Was it six NGOs? Five? Nine. Second one, I have second one we had 15 because we thought like you know the larger 
we want to help more people. Mm. Um, but on the operations, the organizing part, I'm still paying for it, even though it's like uh, two years ago. So again, we are all volunteers, so there's a limit to how much we can do. So mm. we do as much as we can. Oh. Mm. Uh, I think a difference also for last year and this year is that we actually have three coaches per team. So the first two iterations of the bootcamp, there was only one coach per team, and some of the coaches also, there was a lot of work for them, and the scope was a bit unmanageable. And with, I think Shalene and Huimin can tell you, like with the one-on-one -on -one ratio, the re learning is really much more, much better. Yep. So we are aiming for quality over quantity. <laughs> Last question. question and answer or I mean we have to attempt the technical task at home first then come for the clinic just for the question and answer oh okay and then uh, why there are three clinics I mean is it because it's step by step it means the first clinic for this step the second clinic only for the, the step in the middle and then just optimizing for So the pre-book camp will run on Saturdays, so it's on the 14th, 21st and 28th of July, so it's three Saturdays. In between those two and also maybe one week after, so first week of August, we, we may have weekly coat clinics. So coat clinics are meant to be free and easy. If you have a bug uh, or you want to do something, you don't know how to get started, that's where you can come and get like a consultation, like a clinic law. Mm. That, the coat clinic is completely optional. Yeah, weekday nights. Venue TBD, it depends on uh, the sponsor we have. If not, we'll just hunker down at a Starbucks. Yeah. Anyone, the officers, want to <laughs> shout out? <laughs> the the pre-book camp, the topics, uh, most probably the first, the first um, workshop will be HTML, CSS, and GitHub. And then after that, the second workshop will be JavaScript. And the third workshop will probably be React and a bit of... Since you want to... Uh, so Third, third, yeah. third. So second workshop will be JavaScript basics as well as some React basics. Mm -hmm. Third workshop will do a bit more React and do some backend stuff like Node.js Express and MongoDB, if there's time. Okay, any last questions? I understand that uh, there will be wireframe creation related, uh, needed for the front end part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering if we need to be good with design, I mean, good in design in order to do uh, 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 the front end developer? Yeah, just to, just to note, we actually have design volunteers who are doing the mock ups and the wireframes for us, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, so we have the design volunteers, so the mock ups that we so you saw in our talks just now, those were done by uh, Wayman, Hurley, our UX UI volunteers. So you don't have to worry that I have to be able to do all these wireframes and mock-ups myself. It's, a, it's more of a coding bootcamp, not a design exam. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Agreed. <laughs> uh, maybe Wayman will be interested in coding a <laughs> design bootcamp. Elijah? Okay, we are out of... We have one more actually. Goodies. Last oh, we got one more. Anybody? Last this burning last question. <laughs> burning question I have to get. If not, cannot reach us until 14th of July. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Just <laughs> 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 kidding. No more? No more? Great. Okay. Huh? Okay. <laughs> My burning question is like, you know, after you have done the, uh, uh, the apps for, for the different NGOs, what happens? I mean, is there any, any, anybody helping them thereafter? You know? Yeah, to maintain the so, websites. Uh, so the we apps. try to look for NGOs that have an IT support within the organization. So when we actually call them, we screen them for that. If they don't have, we don't disqualify them. Um, but we do tell them that, hey, you know, after the boot camp, there's only so much we can do. And after this, you have to take over because it's like a handover to a client. And then after that, they, yeah, they, they have to take it from there themselves. Yeah, thank you. I, I don't need that. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I thought that was the last one. Okay. Okay.
the yeah. real last question. <laughs> <laughs> the cursed goodie bag and like it was bouncing around for a bit. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, we had one. Uh, she was 17. Oh. Eighteen. Yeah, so she was actually, um, I think she was 16 going on 17 and she was studying in RI, the fast track, um, the true train track. So she's like super smart, obviously. Um, so to her, it was, uh, it was, she was really good at finding balance. Um, yeah, she went through this, yeah, about the same period. Okay. It's not okay. So the the just now you saw the application form, right? The last section is a technical task section. So it's over there that you find the link to click, and then you'll go into another link that explains the whole technical task and what you're supposed to do. So and then you'll go back and you'll do the technical task. When you're done with it, so you you either put a GitHub repo link or a Dropbox link, you know, to your code into that section. So that one is very important. It's probably like the most important besides your name. That that form that that feel, yeah. So no, no. It's so so. The technical task is for you to build an application using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, specifically using React, JS, which is a JavaScript a front end JavaScript framework. So basically, you're supposed to build an app and give us the code to uh, give the code to us in some way or the other. The most ideal way is you use Git, you push it up onto GitHub so you can view it publicly and you just give us that link. Or we also allow you to submit a zip file with your code. On Dropbox? Yep. Is it like a task It's a task that I believe you, you ladies here should all be able to complete with enough time, dedication and guidance through the workshops and the code clinics. Yeah. And the links and resources we've given you. So, there is, so to apply for the bootcamp, you have to complete a technical task. The technical task is to create a to-do app using React and all the tools that Jinsi just talked about. To help you to get there, we, this, this is why we run a pre-bootcamp workshop. The workshops are happening on the 14th, 21st, and 28th. There's also a bunch of resources that's on the technical task already that Jinsi has compiled that can help you to get there. So the reason that why we have a technical task is, for me, is more of administrative. Otherwise, we get even more applications that we have to look through. And it's really hard to tell who has drive and who does not because there are some people with very strong drive unable to present themselves with words. And there are some people who are really good at presenting themselves with words but clearly like the drive. So this is why we make people finish a technical task in order to apply for the boot camp. Do you want another goodie bag? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we... Last, oh, is the uh, question? Okay. Last question. So you will receive an email. Sorry, I think I forgot to mention earlier. You, once you submit your application, you receive an email with a link to go back and edit your application. So you can fill in the front first, and then when you click edit, once you finish your technical task, then you go in and put the link of your technical task. Yeah. So if you're really excited, you can click the link now and make submit application, save it. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Okay, thank you for coming, guys. Uh, we have um, extra T-shirts here from the sponsors. So, first come, first serve. This one, like, yeah, sorry. Food, so. And there's food. Yeah, can tap home or whatever. Just yeah.